So I am Alexander Martin. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am an artist and performer in Peoria, Illinois, and I'm one of the uh, founding members of PGOBA, or the Peoria Guild of Black Artists. So I am a multimedia artist. I'm trained in printmaking. I got my uh, undergraduate degree from West Virginia University in a BFA in printmaking in 2014. And then I moved to Peoria, Illinois, got my MA and MFA, Master of Fine Arts at Bradley University in 2017 with a studio focus of printmaking. Um, and even though I'm not making as much print work now, uh, the thought process and the methods that came from that studio practice manifest themselves in my work. I work a lot with layers. When I'm doing painting with color and stuff, I like to work with layers. Uh, but now my work consists of a lot of found objects um, that I sort of collage together. I do a lot of work with um, mixing paint and installation and then also performance. Uh, through performance I do ritual work um, which sort of manifests itself as like the Queer Craft series which is a series I work on um, about magic and identity um, or drag. I do drag performance. Um, my work is a lot, um, I view a lot of it almost like self-portraits um, I am a multiracial, non-binary person. Um, I'm from Appalachia, like I grew up in West Virginia, living in the Midwest. I exist in a lot of in-betweens, and growing up black and queer in a predominantly white community, I didn't have a lot of references for people to look up to. I didn't have a lot of people who were like me, or people who were experiencing things like me, even in my own family, and I had to sort of make that space for myself and so my work acts as like a navigation of that it's capturing these moments of these in-betweens these sort of chaotic nexuses in which i exist my work lets me capture a moment of that to try to better understand it for myself and also to make tribute to like the communities that help nurture me and help me grow as a person as an artist um, as far as inspiration um, I love installation-based work. Um, I also am a huge fan of pop culture. I grew up reading comics, playing video games, and it's not directly referenced in my work, but it comes through. Um, I love linguistics and language, and I look at a lot of um, stuff like that in reference to my work. Uh, I'm trying to think of specific artists I'm looking at right now. Um, I've been looking at a lot of old camp, like drag, videos like John Waters films and Divine uh, because I'm bringing that not only into my drag practice but figuring out how to mix that with my studio practice because in my head I view them as the same thing and so I've been looking at artists that do that like right now I really love uh, Juno Birch she's a UK based drag queen and an artist she makes these sculptures that reference her her and her identity and like exploring like gender identity and transness and uh, being an alien and really awesome stuff and like she's a um, I'm really into her work right now just because her aesthetic is amazing her performances are great but she's mixing that world of visual and performance art and bringing drag as an element as a and is a trans artist and so a lot of what she's doing really resonates with me um so right now I'm doing a lot of painting but like collage and painting um and I've been playing with materials and layers. Um, during the pandemic, uh, which I mean, we're still in it, but the beginning of that shutdown, I had a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to grieve um, from things that I guess I'd been putting off. I didn't realize how much of an emotional debt I had owed the universe <laughs> for getting to survive this long. I had to shed some tears and the pandemic gave me time to do that. And I've been trying to explore some of that in my work a little bit like dealing with loss and identity um navigation <laughs> um and like how folks see like that feeling of not having your truth seen um like as a non-binary person i some people think it's like i'm playing pretend or like i'm making something up or I'm doing it because it's a trend but it's how I felt my whole life I just didn't know there was a word for it and so some of my work I'm putting that in it like capturing these moments where I feel really one and at home with myself um and sharing that with other people so they can sort of see get that insight a little bit but then also compounding that with like my own personal journey with loss and uh, recently lost a younger sibling and that 
um, after that moment I saw things in a lot of clarity and it's been showing up in my work because it happened right before the shutdown um, where you think a lot about the void or other things and like negative stuff not negative I shouldn't say negative stuff but like death and loss and like where we go like these questions have been asked by everybody forever um, but mixing that with like being black and queer and knowing that like our life expectancy is not very long <laughs> we're walking with targets on our backs um, and so putting that in my work I've been using a lot of really dark matte blacks um, to sort of suggest this idea of the void or of nothingness and like my fear of that but it, through making that work it's been really therapeutic um, like you can see it in a few of my new pieces where there's stuff compounded on top like layers of color and glitter and texture um, that are like references to me and it's like trying to change my mindset from looking at that as nothingness or as being scary and to looking at it as um, the unknown like a black hole, a black hole is absolute darkness. It sucks in light, right? And someone may look at that view as nothingness, but it's actually everything. A black hole has so much material and data and information and stars and space in it. And it's there, it doesn't disappear, it's in there, but it's just hidden behind something we don't understand. And I'm trying to look at like my fear of the unknown, my fear of that instead of being something that's dark and scary, it's something that is just unknown and it could be powerful and like how we're connected to each other and like so trying to reframe my mindset as i'm healing and putting that in my work again with adding in those elements of like loving and respecting myself um going into the future i see i've been doing a lot of drag video performances having to perform at home uh, because of the shutdown has made me bring in video work and you can do a lot when you add the medium of time to something and i started figuring this out with performance but now I see myself in the future doing some really wild installations and I want to do weird, fun performance and video work. Like I want to put on drag and get in costumes and make an environment and then exist in it. Like make a, make my mindscape, make this space where I can exist in my truth and then invite people into that space and share it with them in a weird, glamorous, disgusting way. <laughs> um, P. Goba has given me a space to just be. B when you make work, especially work about identity, or when you put yourself in your work, people, you're putting yourself on display. And being surrounded by other black creatives, I don't have to explain my blackness. I'm not a black artist when I'm with Pigoba. I'm an artist. And I get to have real conversations about my experiences without having to educate, without having to have that barrier, without having to address that understanding. And it's such a solid environment to make work in and to just be around and to also just commiserate and complain about everything that we face, not only like outside of the arts, but within the arts too. There's lots of barriers to showing work and being involved in the community. There's just lots of barriers and we get to address that and it's with people you love. And also like with Pigo, there's lots of queer black artists in this community. So that's another added element where it's like, I don't have to explain anything. I just get to talk about my work and get to collaborate and have fun with people who already understand so much that you don't have to have that uh, entry level conversation. It's like, I would equate it to like knowing a different language. Like, you could have friends that you could sort of practice with or talk to someone with, but then when you meet someone who's the same level as you or like someone who speaks your language, you just get to open up so much more. And it's a safe space to do that. It's a safe space to be vulnerable and it's fun. Um, I think something I'd want the community to know about Pigoba is it is a safe and welcoming space. And like, we're here. We want to advocate for black artists. We want black artists getting paid for the work they do. We want to share the joy of black creatives and share the work they're making. And we want to show that there's a space in the creative field, in the arts, for people of color. There's a space for us to make work. There's a space for us to exist and to be happy doing it. It's a space where you don't have to 
protest and march and be loud and visible to be seen, you walk in and you are already welcomed. And that's an amazing space to get to be in. And I didn't realize how much I was needing it or missing it until we found it. Um, and so it's, I can't stress enough how great it is to just be able to create and share and commiserate and laugh in that space. And I hope we can continue to make that for more. And I hope we can show young creatives of color that the arts are a viable option. You can live your life as an artist. Um, and it's a good choice. So my collaborating printer was Nikki Arnold. And working with her is super cool because uh, she's like a woodblock expert and makes really awesome work. And like I... Uh, as I said before, I'm trained in printmaking, like that's what I studied in school, and I've done wood blocks and like linoleum and relief prints in the past. So with this project, since I'm doing a lot more performance and a lot more like things new to me, I really wanted to mix that world of the glamour of drag and the celebration of queerness in that space, like dancing and performing, but also with the wood block process. And I um damaged a wood block. Um, I danced on top of it. I hit it with a hammer. I stomped my heels on it, like high heels. <laughs> um, I initially did a line drawing, like I just did like a contour drawing and carved that out because I wanted a base. I wanted some base imagery. Um, and I did some floral imagery because I've been doing a lot with, recently I'm including a lot of flowers in my work and a lot of flora. And so I carved that as a base just as some line work and then I went to town on the block and in collaborating with my printer when we did the test block it it's just it was so wild being in conversation with a printmaker being like so today I ran it over smashed it with a hammer a few times grinded it in the asphalt threw it against my door put some nails in it let me know what that looks like and then seeing the first print pool and learn what textures came through from what process Especially like when I was in college, I used to treat things as so like precious and like you can't mess up and like going in just buck wild <laughs> was really fun and like talking with a printer about what I could do to something to make more texture come and go and sort of learning like the del the the intricacies of how to create texture on a wood block. So I got to do carving, yes, but then I got to do a lot of alternative methods. And it was super fun. I actually made a video to go along with the piece to um, uh, knock on wood <laughs> um, because I like that sort of tongue-in-cheek camp humor and it's a wood block. And so I got to dress up, play this really funny song and like dance on top of my wood block and then carve it and stab it. And it's this piece... I think affected my practice in the sense of like it's where I see my work going is this sort of intermedia like performance video physical work that's made from it and like while getting to play the whole time it was super fun super fun to do and I see my I think this piece sort of kicked off something in my practice that I've been wanting to do for a long time and it was the perfect opportunity to make those worlds meet and it was so much fun like being wearing a giant golden dress and having long nails on and huge hair and then just hitting a block with a hammer over and over again was super fun and it was nothing i ever did while i was in school and so now it's like i'm bringing all these things that i like to do together and this project gave me the opportunity to do that um and to again like i love texture and work and to give me a chance to see what you can really do with printmaking and what you can do with relief printing. Um, and it was, it was awesome. And again, my collaborator being like an expert on wood blocks, she gave me even more ideas of things I could do to create texture and like gave me different options, like lighter and darker prints and how sometimes depending on the amount of pressure, it will pick up more of the subtle textures, like where my nails had scratched it or other things. And it was just, I don't know, it was super, super awesome and super fun to do. Like, it was a really exciting back and forth, just sending each other text messages and giving her weird clips of like, here's me in some high heels stepping on this thing. <laughs> Let me know what you think. And so it was just a really fun back and forth.